Hey. <clears throat> oh, good afternoon. <laughs> Had to check the time. Um, I'm going to start a short series of videos here. Um, I've touched on some basics of nutrition. I'll, I'll get more in depth with you know, some stuff with that as we go along here. But something I want to touch base on and make some videos for is simply um, all this. seems like there's a lot of confusion and hypertrophy and I've I've heard a lot of uh, a lot of guys that just say it's about uh, this micro tearing bullshit. Um, that is that can that is one thing that has been shown to um, help create hypertrophy, but at nowhere near the degree of all the other elements. Um, so some jackass wrote an article on that, and if you look on a Google search, uh, it might pull up first some. 15 year old article that some guy wrote that you have no idea who he is and there's really no scientific basis behind it. it's just some short thing saying something about the the micro tearing damage to uh the myofibril tissue so um that does create some density uh kind of like a the way a tree would grow up whipping in the wind they become denser um but at the same time, that is more of becoming tougher and adapting to basically just getting like hit with a load, like a, a densening. Um, and also, if you're training only for that type of training, your tendons aren't going to be able to properly uh, heal. And you're missing out on all the other factors. Um, when it comes to muscular hypertrophy, there's all kinds of different factors. I jotted some things down so I don't get too lost. As we know, I'm starting to manage my ADHD. And instead of saying, uh, and getting lost and blabbering, I'm going to try to jot shit down so I can follow along. Um, there's the increased size of growth within the cells. Okay. Now this is the first video I'm going to make of this. I'll get more in depth with these things as we go, like little bits and pieces, but growth inside of the cells, where the cells within themselves create and take on like growth factors and pull proteins into them um, and get larger. That's why when they reduce the myostatin in these cattle experimentally, they just continually grow, or when a boy goes through puberty, his muscles get larger. It just naturally happens. It's a hormonal response to stimuli, okay? Um, all kinds of stimulus can create muscle size. Um, there's also the sarcoplasmic, which I call take on of fuels. Uh, that's where the muscle gets larger because it's taken on, you know, nitrogen, ATP, um, glycogen, more blood, oxygen, things like that, uh, that causes more of a, a rounding look. The one that hype that uh, bodybuilders like to really maximize on to make those muscle bellies really full. And that is what generate what training with reps creates under a given resistance because you need fuel to get through that. Whereas people that would train just powerlifting style and do like a few reps, that's why a power lifter for example, some of them have a lower body weight, but they're very dense. And if they're always training lower rep for just a few lifts, um, you'll notice they don't have the hypertrophy to their arms or certain things like that. Sometimes their muscles are out of balance. Um, but for like one or two reps, they, they can create a lot of force and handle a lot of load into a negative. But um, they don't have the muscle size for carrying, say, you know, a larger bodybuilder to have a resistance uh, over a 10, 20 rep period, that's where the size comes from. Like uh, the old Tom Platt's legs where he lived on 20 rep squats, you know, things like that. So um, different sorts of stimulus can create the size of the muscle cells. Uh, obviously, they need to generate force or <clears throat> um, lower a load that causes uh, fiber recruitment. Uh, fiber recruitment um, 
can happen if the load increases into the contraction or if you're fighting something against gravity the load increases into the stretch um, that's why I like to incorporate you know obviously I've, I've studied this really deep and I've gone even deeper with the balance and the band training and the uh, if people are just sticking with the weight training they're really missing out on all the factors the um, the balance itself the hormonal response of our training to what we do is about 90 percent of the equation um, when people don't simp fully understand what I'm talking about with that that's when they just kind of like look like a deer in headlights and just go back to basic weight training as especially if people are using machines machines other than warming up and getting a pump a little pre-exhausting before you go do a main movement are a complete waste of fucking time um, and then there's the, the isometric holding of a load, reps with a given load, uh, lowering and creating force of a load, and then, you know, like, like I've mentioned, the balancing under a load where all these muscles are coming into play, the uh, constantly burning fuel and um, constantly being stimulated in, in new fibers, being grabbed as they fatigue, and then they have to hold and also create force and then lower again. Um, that is some of the best stimulus. That's why the balance has such an amazing response for not only hypertrophy, but fat burning and heart health. Um, the central nervous system stimulation and hormonal response is key. I've just, I just said something on that. Got a little bit ahead of myself. Um, that's where why for years guys didn't really understand the science behind it but they knew that when using free weights they got better results than they did with machines um, the only way guys saw results with machines was with you know massive drug use because they were replacing uh, releasing their own growth factors and whatnot balance itself creates growth hormone and growth factors but then balance under load creates that at up to like 10 20 percent and the resistance of a load creates androgen production. So, and then the pump. The pump creates room, um, fuel, and food for future, t future tissue and fuel storage. It basically blazes away for the new tissue. Uh, myostatin lowering and growth factor creation. Um, myostatin is what puts the basically the ceiling cap on what we can do, what we can be. And through training, hormonal response, things like that, we lower myostatin levels. Um, with the, if, that's why myostatin's there basically, so our muscles don't just continually grow to the point that it'd be just ridiculous. Like um, the cattle that you see that they've done that to it, they just eat grass and stand there and become these freaks in nature with no body fat. Um, <clears throat> Sounds good, but it would get so out of hand we wouldn't. <laughs> it wouldn't be cool. Uh, frequency and total volume and intensity. You know, those are some factors too. Um, like last night, myself, I was bullshitting with somebody in the gym, and my intensity was was shit. Um, frequency. That's what I. Another thing, what I like about the, the bands. Um, our joints take longer to heal than our muscles do. Um, so even if you're somebody that's training with weights, you could train a muscle the next day with bands, give those joints a break, create better stimulus, grow more. And, um, you're a lot of times when we're just using heavy weights, we have to wait so long between our workouts because of what we're doing to our joints. We're missing out on a lot there. So even people that, you know, like, uh, strongmen or, or power lifters, things like that, they could, um, do their their functional training and then on days that they're not tr create you know using balance and bands and things like that is actually going to make them all around better and stronger and their ligaments better so um, that's that's something I can touch on there at a later date I don't want to get too in depth um, then you know like the fibers after a while they become so large they eventually spit split and creating new cells um, that's hyperplasia which then the newer cells and fibers uh, then can hypertrophy. 
and depending on genetics and blood type and things like that, we're more apt. Um, uh, like the type A, A positive, which I'm lucky enough to have, even being somewhat of an ectomorph, um, smaller framed and everything, my, my muscles have the ability to split and become kind of a sink of fibers. Um, and then training period to keep cortisol down. Like another thing, if you're pissing around in the in the gym for too long of a period of time, cortisol production, that's why I, I hate fucking long long uh, long moderate cardio or high intensity long periods of cardio. Uh, the cortisol production becomes too rampant. Um, you sh like uh, for example, not only does resistance to load, but just basically um, high intensity anaerobic activity, like jump squats. You look at guys like sprinters. Uh, sprinters, their legs, for example, are incredible. And it is from the force that they're creating with that causes that muscle to have to hypertrophy in order to like spring into action like that. Jump squats, for example, um, somebody my size doing jump squats, your muscles actually get hit with a force of up to like 600 pounds for a second, and that creates an initial uh, hormonal response. But um, now I'm going to have to pull back behind a little bit. Uh, training period, keep cortisol down, increase protein synthesis and glycogen uptake. That's kind of... Uh, the protein synthesis is your ability to take up more proteins. Um, there's a lot of people that read these basic shit off of Google search. Your body can only suck up 30 grams of protein at a time. And that's those are studies done on basic people that don't even work out. Um, they're just your, your basic person, you know. Um, somebody that's got a higher hormonal output and has just done a rigorous workout can sometimes go up to double that depending on how large and how much stimulus they had in their hormonal response um, so on certain days when we train and for hours afterwards our protein might be up you know and then on days where we're sitting on our ass doing nothing it could be moderate and we take advantage of like healthy fats and things like that um, that's why I push eating with your appetite. Uh, people don't understand it. They just want some generic fucking thing they follow every day. And that, that's not the way our body works. Um, it doesn't work on a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week schedule. It's organic. Um, and biologically, it heals when it heals. For example, training, if the bro split, you're going to do chest on Monday and all the time. Your body's going to catch on to that and know what you're doing. And not only that, um, like, for example, I might not be able to train a muscle right now, but eight, nine hours from now I might be able to. Well, take advantage of that, you know. And that goes back to volume, frequency, intensity, and it's, it's where it's like walking a tightrope. Um, to become the best at what we do, we have to continually pay attention to all these things, and that's where I'm trying to go as far as teaching my people. Um, the longer I work with somebody and the more they listen and realize they don't know everything and I don't know everything and we can even learn together, we become a more efficient team, okay? So, that pretty much covers everything I wanted to say today on that aspect. I'll get something jotted together to get more in depth with just the specific areas of that. But this would be the first video of uh, basically breaking down muscular hypertrophy. All right, have a good day.